Well, hey, YouTube. Matt and Roy back once again. Well, I went to the thrift store today, as you guys can probably see, and I scored some really good deals. Well, I think they're good anyway. <laughs> as usual, I went there not expecting to find much, because let's face it, they really haven't had that much lately. But over in the electronics section, some they had just put out a bunch of laptops, and they were all piled one on top of another. Uh, none of them had the actual power cords, but that never phased me too much. So I looked through the bunch, and I picked out the best of the three. And that's what you see in front of me. Now I searched my closet for the right adapters for these, and I fa pretty much found them. Um, I knew I had the one for this Toshiba because I have an older Pentium 3 Toshiba laptop that kind of bit the dust a while back and I saved, but I saved the laptop and the adapter so as you can see that one's definitely getting power uh, this one is the uh, compact this is actually probably the newest of the group and I had bought an old HP adapter for an old HP a long time ago on eBay but never used it so I matched up the um, voltages and sure enough this one looks like it's getting power as well the only one that I haven't, I'm not too promising about is this one here. This is a little bit older HP, probably from, oh, I'm guessing around 2003. And as you can see, I do have the adapter plugged in there, but unfortunately no power lights are coming on. And if I push that, it's not getting any juice. So I'm going to have to work on that later. It may just be the adapter's not quite right for it, and I'll be working on that one later. But I thought what I'd do right now is go ahead and look at these two. Uh, I'm going to go over each one, and then we'll power them up. I've actually not powered either of these up yet. So let's start with the Toshiba. Uh, this is a Toshiba. As you can see, it's running uh, Windows XP, or supposed to be. It's got an Intel Celeron processor uh, with some type of NVIDIA graphics. Uh, it's pretty much rubbed off, so I can't really read that. On the front here you have your infrared port, or actually I think that was an option as you can see it's covered over here, but that was supposed to be an infrared port. Have your uh, power indicator that your power adapters plugged in. Uh, this one's for the power on. It shows you the battery's charging. Uh, the hard drive indicator. And here you have something unique. This is a floppy disk and or CD indicator. That'll flash when your floppy drive or your CD is reading. Now, unfortunately, this particular model does not have the optional floppy disk drive, which would have sat right here. And I know that by my other uh, Pentium 3 um, laptop. Uh, your famous Toshiba volume rocker, they used that up until a couple of years ago, as far as I know. Uh, headphone microphone port. Uh, an artifact probably for another uh, out port, um, probably uh, audio out, but not used in this model. Uh, this is to open the um, screen up. This is the latch. Various media buttons here. This is like direct access to your CD, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Digital media, so probably uh, push that will go to your MP3s. And then your f various play, fast forward, rewind, and uh, stop buttons. On the side here, we have a switch for the Wi-Fi on and off. Have a DVD-ROM CD burner, called what they call a combo drive. Um, back there you have your Kensington lock port. Found this kind of interesting. If you go to the side here, um, in this one, because there's no floppy drive there, that's actually where the battery is, but I'm not going to open that right now. Um, I'm not sure why they did this, but you can see in the PC card slot, they put in a wireless G Linksys adapter. And I'm not sh again, I'm not sure why they did this. Either the internal one wasn't working, or it's very possible it maybe was just a wireless B, and they wanted to go ahead and get a little more speed on that. And if I bring it to the back here, um, you can see you have your uh, modem port, 56K modem. Uh, hang on a second. Yep, that's your 56K modem port. 
Then you have your three USB, I believe they're 2.0 slots. This looks like a model from around 2003, so that would probably be 2.0. Uh, last, and last but not least, you have your Ethernet and your AC adapter port right there. So we'll go ahead and turn it this way. One thing I really, really liked about this model was the fact it had the, these really nice speakers. See how they're kind of lifted and they're forward facing instead of most laptops that have them like sitting down flush to the bezel. Very nice feature. I'm sure this has phenomenal sound for a laptop. Got your power button up here and not sure what these are for. Uh, one I think is for the brightness, probably brightness up and down and volume up and down, some various tasks, probably a, a macro button, if you will. Keyboard looks to be in good shape, only minimal wear. You can see a little bit of wear right there on the space bar. The rest of it's clean. And if you look here on the shift and the enter, you can tell that um, they don't have much wear at all. So I don't think this laptop has seen a lot of use. And there's your trackpad. Kind of small for a laptop, but still usable. Left and right clickies. So now that I've done a quick overview of this laptop, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. I have not booted this up. All I did was plug it in to see if it would get power. So this is going to be a first start of this Toshiba laptop. So let's go ahead. Well, it's getting power. Let's see if we can figure out how to get into the... Oh, there we go. Oh, these are the uh, this is the uh, BIOS which loaded up pretty quick. As you can see, I believe this has 256 megabytes of memory. If you can look at it right there, 262144. Um, just very very basic BIOS. Uh, boot priority is the hard drive first. We'll probably be changing that. Uh, TV output. Um, battery, peripheral, some basic device. Now if I remember correctly, change pages in these old BIOS, Toshiba BIOS says you have to use the page up and page down, which are right here. There we go. Uh, let's see if we have a hard drive in here. Uh, that would be over here. Okay. Guess you can't do it from here. Let's go down one more page and see what we have. Well, I guess that's it. This is a very, very simple BIOS. I can see that it shows there is a hard drive here, but it's not telling me what it is. So I guess that's really all we can do in this BIOS. Let's go ahead and exit it. Let's see if it'll load into any kind of uh, operating system. like we may have a bad hard drive in here. Either that or it's still very possible it was taken out. Uh, that BIOS is so simplistic I really couldn't tell. I mean it looked like it had a hard drive. But I guess that's about what we can do with this uh, Toshiba. Well at least we know that it turns on. And I will be going more in depth uh, with these. Uh, they're going to each get their own individual video. For you guys that ask, and I know you, a lot of you do, I paid $6.98 each for these. They were all the same price. And let me uh, unplug this real quick. And I'll show you guys the uh, bottom. This is a Toshiba. You can pause it if you want to read that better. Model uh, 1415-S105. And I'm going to go ahead and plug, try to do it this way. Plug this back in because I want to get the battery charged up. I want to see if the battery will actually hold a good charge. So that's all I can do for now with that one. Let's move on to this Compaq. Uh, this one is probably the newest of the bunch actually. This is a Compaq model, if it will focus, focus, model V4000, actual model is V4125CL. Uh, made by the Hewlett Packard company, so this was obviously after Hewlett Packard's acquisition of Compaq. Um, you can see on the front here you have your power, battery charging, and hard drive lights. 
This is really interesting. This is actually how you open it. You push this and then you pull up to actually open the screen. It has Alltech Lansing speakers, so I'm assuming this probably has very good sound quality as well. On this side, and yes, we actually have a dual layer DVD burner. It doesn't say that, but I know it is because I've used these drives before. And this is the only one of the bunch that actually has a DVD burner. Kensington lock. Now this is actually funny. Nothing on the back of this whatsoever. Absolutely nothing. Over here, we have all of our ports. I'm going to try to do this without unplugging the laptop. I'm just going to put it on top of that one real quick. You have your uh, PCMCIA card reader. Might be 2.0, I'm not sure on this. Uh, your audio headphone microphone ports. That looks to be a S-video outport. You can see that little picture of a TV there. Two USB 2.0 ports. A VGA out. Uh, your Ethernet and 56K modem ports, and your power port. And that is it for ports on this. So this was not a very high-end laptop originally, but definitely usable. Again, Compaq, at this point, and, and even to today, since they retired it, Compaq was always kind of the budget-oriented laptop ever since uh, Hewlett, pretty much ever since Hewlett Packard acquired them. Again, running Windows XP originally. Uh, you can see you got a nice touchpad. I always like the touch pads on these. Nice and big and rubber buttons so they don't wear down too easily. Minimal wear. You can see a little shiny spot on the uh, space bar right there. The other keys look pretty good. Still have a lot of uh, tactile um, rough feel to them. Your Wi-Fi button, power button, volume up and down, and mute. And that is it for your media buttons on this computer. Again with the other one, I have not booted this up, so this is going to be the first start of this compact. Let's see what happens. That's good so far. Let's see if it com anything comes up. At Let's see if we got anything on a hard drive. Uh, okay, this one definitely has a hard drive. It's loading Windows XP. No surprise there. Um, just to let you guys know, what I might do is, because I'm not sure if I can get this one working, I might go ahead and stick the RAM from this computer into this. Um, that's if this one won't work, because this only has 256 megabytes of RAM, and that's not enough to run anything. But let's concentrate on this again. Let's see if we can get anything to come up. You can see that the uh, hard drive light is working. And I also have this uh, 120 gigabyte Seagate drive, which I know is good. So if any of these are missing a hard drive, I'll just go ahead and put that in. Wow. Well, it looks like we might actually have a good laptop here. Not sure specs wise. I'm guessing probably it, a max, a gig of RAM, probably even less than that in here. I never get lucky with these older laptops. Usually when I get them around here, they usually have what they came with, no real upgrades to speak of. You can see it's running super slow. I mean, that's to be expected. It's probably riddled with viruses. Well, there it has some program called Eraser. That looks suspicious already. Doesn't seem to be much else on it. One thing that's kind of interesting to note, though, you can see even though the computer's kind of frozen up, the hard drive's hardly working at all. You see down here you have the uh, indicator just kind of going crazy there, the hourglass, so it's trying to do something. Well, while that's booting, I'll go ahead and take you over here to this HP. This is the only one I have not been able to get any power to. As you can see, I've had it plugged in now for a few minutes. And it is just totally dead. Um, it's very possible it's the wrong uh, power adapter, but I remember having one of these back in the day. And these were notorious for internal uh, power supply failures. As you can see, 
I push the button and absolutely nothing's happening. But I'll search my room a little more, see if I can find a uh, AC adapter for this one. Maybe we can get it working, a better one that is. It's a Compaq M9010, you can see right there. There, it's got uh, JBL Pro speakers. All of these have very good speakers in them, I'm very surprised. Power button right there. Various media buttons here, shopping, email, and such. Pretty good keyboard. Again, just basic wear, nothing unusual. The wood you can look, the way you can tell how much one of these were used is by the touch pads. You can see, normally you would find a circle worn out in here if this was used a lot. Now, if you look closely, there is no wear in that whatsoever. And also the buttons, because uh, this is a painted surface, this will rub off with uh, just normal use. So the fact that this still looks brand new tells me this laptop was not used very much. This is a Pentium 4 base system. I can tell that right off the bat, of course, because of the sticker. Again, made for Windows XP. It has, uh, I believe it does have wireless, that's what that is, but I'm not sure. There's an infrared port there. Uh, battery charging indicator, hard drive indicator, and power indicator. Go ahead and shut this. HP logo on top. I'm just going to go ahead and unplug it since it's not powering up anyway. On this side we have, um, I believe the battery is located in there. Um, not sure what that is. Uh, that's your mute. Volume down and up. Your audio ports, headphone microphone. It's got the uh, combo drive again. This is DVD-ROM CD burner. A very dusty USB port right there with some kind of foreign body in there. I'm not exactly sure what that is. <laughs> I have to clean that out later. This is your power port, 90 watts. Um, they really should put the voltage, not the wattage in there because that's what most people go by. Two more USB uh, 2.0, I'm sorry, two USB 2.0 ports. So that's three so far. Ethernet. This is not a S video um, adapter. This is actually for an external keyboard and mouse. You could buy one of those Y connectors and connect both if you wanted to. I believe that they're usually compatible with these. Legacy um, parallel port for a printer. Um, I don't believe a modem would work in that though because uh, it's mainly designed for a printer. Not. I uh, don't believe it's duplexing. Um, we have our VGA out. And here is your S video out. So this actually has a lot of nice ports. Um, vent over here, modem. And this is why I really want to try and get this one working. Most of you guys that watch my channel probably know what that is. That is a uh, triple, IEEE 1394 Firewire port. And boy, would I love to have this to be able to edit or just upload some videos when I'm on the go. Over here, you do have a floppy disk drive that I believe has seen better days. It's kind of crushed up there, and the cover's missing, but who knows? It still could work. I mean, the uh, the, the uh, switch still works on it. And then, of course, you have your, in this case, one PCI or PC card slot. This one is just a blanking port on there. So that's about what I can tell you about with this one. Um, like I said, each of these will be the subject of their own videos. Um, but again, they were all $6.98 and sold as parts only. Let's go back to the compact here because I think it did finally load. You can see that uh, somebody was using this with a uh, HP printer, which I'm just going to get rid of that for now. It does have Wi-Fi built in, which I did expect. So let's go into my computer and see exactly what this has for specs. Oh. Okay, that's not a real my computer, so I'll have to go through the start menu. There we go. Wow! Check this out, guys. It is a Celeron CPU, but look at that memory. This actually has two gigabytes of RAM, which I'm very, very surprised. This must have been upgrades. I can't imagine this particular system coming with any more than maybe 512 a gig at most registered to Selena whoever that is and you could tell this is the original uh, compact installation because it absolutely says compact on there 
Just some information there about Compaq. I kind of wonder if any of those technical support uh, numbers are good anymore. Be fun just to call and uh, see if they would answer. <laughs> Probably not. I'm sure it's changed since then. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, hard drive. See see what size. I'm guessing 60 or 80 gig unless it's been upgraded. Uh, oh, there you go. So it's an 80 gig drive. So this is not a bad computer at all. Um, you know, it's not new. I mean, it never will be the fastest thing in the world, but for basic internet, maybe doing some web searches, this is ideal. I'm very happy for my uh, $7 investment on this. Take a quick look at the programs on here. Accessories, we got games, uh, HP update. The Interactual, that's a video player, very common uh, to this era compact. Um, Interwin Video DVD, Microsoft Works, Move Technology, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. That's uh, probably for video editing. Sonic uh, DVD Burner, Sound Max is for the uh, sound card in there. And that's about it. Just some Microsoft Money and PowerPoint Viewer. I'm going to load up this eraser real quick. I'm just kind of curious to see what that app actually is. Uh, okay. This is just one of those scheduling programs. If you want to have your schedule during the day, you can go ahead and just put the information in there. So I don't think that's... I, at first I thought maybe that was some kind of malicious program, like one of those... Um, uh, antivirus 2008 programs. It was actually something fairly new. If you guys know anything more about this, uh, please let me know. I've never heard of this eraser program. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here because I think this is getting pretty long. I hope you guys enjoyed this, but before I go, I'm going to let you know real quick my plans for these computers. This one, I don't know yet. This is probably going to be a part system at best. If I can get it to work, I might do something with it. This one here, I'm going to do one of two things with. I'm either going to reload XP and use XP, or because it has two gigabytes of RAM, I might go ahead and load Ubuntu Linux on here. Um, this is has more than enough speed for that, especially with the two gigs of RAM. So tell me what you guys think. Let me know if you think I should put Ubuntu Linux or just reload XP on here and, and use Windows XP. I know people are afraid of the security risks with XP, but you know what? I really don't mind. I can put enough protection on there to where it, it won't bother me. And I won't be using this for any uh, online banking or anything like that. That's why I have my uh, cell phone and my tablet. This one here is definitely going to need to be upgraded. I mean, two, two 256 megabytes of RAM is not enough. I'm going to have to search around to see if I have um, any extra RAM I can put in there, but... I'm definitely going to be using this for something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work with these two, and I'll probably take the two and make one good one, depending on which one shows the most promise. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.